Hello, thank you for viewing this piece on personal well-being. Self-care is not self-indulgence. In fact, it can be self-preservation. While this piece can be viewed by anyone, we're thinking about people who are in a nursing role. Because with COVID-19, there have been additional challenges that people have faced. And it's important, as well as looking after everyone else, that you also make time to look after you. Please note, this presentation is not a replacement for professional advice, because sometimes even when we care for others, there are times when we need someone to care for us. On the QNI's website, there's a Nurses and Midwives Wellbeing Resource Booklet, which is a lot of resources, websites and sources of support, as well as whatever is available locally in your place of work or community. You do matter and it is okay to make time for you. And at the moment, I would invite you to think, how often do you actually make time for your own self-care just now? Never. Now and again. Often. Every day. I would like to think by the end of this short presentation that you're going to consider making time for your self-care every day because you are worth it. So. The face behind the voice. Hello, I'm Hilda. I'm the Chief Exec of COPE Scotland, which provides a variety of well-being, self-care and self-management techniques and tools to help us roll with the challenges of life, overcome those which can be overcome and reduce the impact of those which have no immediate solution. And we were delighted to work with Cupastor Scotland on the COVID-19 healthcare support appeal work to look at providing a variety of tools for nurses well-being with a specific focus as well on community nursing because again there are many types of nursing and in different environments there are many different types of stressors and challenges. Before we move on however I would like to take a moment just to pause and be and not be doing you may have arrived at this webinar after a busy day, maybe squeezing it into a break. It may be something that you're watching with a team, but the chances are there'll be something in your mind from what you were doing before you sat to watch this and something in your mind for what you're going to be doing afterwards. But for the next few moments, this is time for you. And to help bring you into that moment, I would invite you, if you feel safe and comfortable to do so, to sit comfortably with your feet in the ground, close your eyes and just breathe. Find your own natural rhythm. We were born knowing how to breathe and somewhere in the busyness of our lives, everything just seemed to get faster and faster and faster till it can feel that sometimes we just don't have time to draw breath between one task and the next. But we are allowed to pause. We are allowed to let the weight fall from our shoulders even if only for a moment to find our own natural rhythm like a butterfly spreads its wings to be recharged by the energy of the sun we too can be recharged when we take a moment to pause and be and not be doing just breathe and find our own natural rhythm. And in a moment, we're going to continue with the presentation. But I would invite you, at least once a day, just to take a few minutes. You're worth that. Just to pause and be and not be doing 
because you matter and no one can run on empty. We often hear of the thousand yard stare in the battlefield. But there are so many battlefields that we find ourselves on. We can battle against the pain that we see in those that we are supporting. We can battle against the poverty and inequality that we see those that we are supporting face in addition to the health challenges that lie in front of them. We can sometimes feel powerless that we see all this pain and wonder, what can we do to help? What can we do to make it better? With increasing demands and fewer resources, sometimes it can feel that we're just constantly running to catch up. That when we do get home, all we want to do is just lie and stare into space. Our energy for being asked what we want for dinner could have us feeling that we want to scream because we don't want to make another decision. To try and concentrate and helping the kids with their homework is just, I can't face doing any more homework. I just want to lie and watch whatever's on the television. Doesn't need to be anything just so that I can zone out. Because if we don't make time for our own self-care, all that happens is we work hard, we go home, do what we need to do, go to bed, hope we get a decent night's sleep to get back up in the morning and for it all to start all over again. But when we build self-care into our day, we also begin to notice when there are changes that actually people have overcome their health challenges to either live with it in a way where they suffered less, to have more good days, to have more energy to be spending with their children, to have an hope for the future. Because when we look after ourselves and our self-care, we also begin to notice, actually, we are making a difference. And for all, sometimes it may feel like a battlefield. We actually do win more battles than we realise. Because sometimes we're so focused on what we still need to do that we don't take a pause to appreciate what we've already done. And what you do is amazing for helping other people. But it's also important that you also look after you. This is why we need to challenge the myth that self-care is self-indulgent. Because somewhere in there, it seems to have became some sort of badge of virtue that we never take a holiday, we never have a proper lunch break, we always work over our contracted hours, we're always tired, we're always exhausted because somehow or other by doing this, it appears that we are doing our best for everybody else. But are we doing our best for ourselves? Are we doing our best for our own family? In a plane, when an oxygen mask comes down, you put your own on first, not because you're selfish, not because you don't care, but because if you don't put your own oxygen mask on, you're not able to help anyone else. And self-care is putting on your own oxygen mask because no matter how strong your battery is, it does need time to recharge. And self-care is one of the ways that we can do that. It matters that we check in with how we're doing. It matters that we don't wait until we're unwell ourselves before we realise we've actually pushed ourselves too far. There are many ways we can check in with our own well-being. There are a variety of tools shared on the Nurses and Midwives resource booklet. There may be some that you have in your own workplace. I was fortunate a few years ago to do an eight-week mindfulness-based stress reduction course. And while I must admit I don't spend hours every day meditating or even doing 20-minute body scans, 
I am very mindful of my breathing. I am very mindful of when my mind is becoming overwhelmed by too many things to do. My awareness enables me to take a pause, to recognise the myth of multitasking, that nobody can do more than one thing at once. We can just do a lot of things one thing at a time. And that we have to prioritise about what, at this moment in time, we're giving our attention to. So part of self-care is also being mindful of looking after our well-being and touching base with our well-being when things are not going the way we would like them to. We all are different and we all may find different techniques helpful for us. It may be our enthusiasm for hobbies, it may be our interest in other people, it may be how we are at home. But find something that enables you to measure where is my well-being at at the moment? Where am I finding that actually things are not going to plan? And what can I do to help address that? And on the Queen's Nurse Institute site, there are a variety of tools and techniques available for you to have a look at to find one that works for you. We are all unique. And that's why it really matters. You find what works for you and you want to do it. Some people may want to climb Monroe's at the weekend. Great. If that's something that someone wants to do that works for them, fantastic. Someone else might want to do some gardening, read a book, take the dog for a long walk, bake a cake. What matters is that it's something that's good for your health and well-being that you enjoy and look forward to, and it gives you a chance to recharge your energy levels. We're going to watch a little video which shows a variety of techniques to relax. And the reason we're showing this video is to highlight that we are all different and what works for one person might not work for somebody else, and that's okay. Self-care is a smorgasbord of choices. So if you try something, you think, oh, that wasn't for me. That's okay. Try something different next time and keep trying because eventually you will find something that works for you. How our body perceives us in relation to gravity, movement and balance Think about swinging gently in a hammock and how that motion for some could be very relaxing. Or having a zero gravity guard and recliner chair, which when we sit in and recline you feel so much more relaxed. Or going swimming and being held by the water as you float, just don't fall asleep when you're in the pool. There is also a sense around what our body is doing and how we can plan movements. For example, clap our hands together when our eyes are closed. But body awareness is another way to relax. For some, this could be dancing, stretching, doing yoga, also katsugan, which is a natural, spontaneous movement. We may wonder how does touch help us relax? Think of children who have a comfort blanket or a favourite teddy they cannot go to sleep without. Think when we are cold and we put on a nice warm jumper or wrap up in a snuggly soft blanket. These are examples of how touch can help us relax. Learning how to give yourself a hand massage is a wonderful way to relax. Even something as simple as taking time to put on a scented hand cream can help us. Walking barefoot on a beach and feeling the warm sand between our toes uses our sense of touch to relax. Or feeling the rain on our face or a gentle breeze blowing across our skin on a warm day. Now you may be thinking, taste? Taste to relax? What is she talking about? Well, have you heard the term comfort food? Comfort food is said to provide consolation of a feeling of well-being. Now we need to watch as a lot of comfort food can be high in sugar or carbohydrates. And too much of anything isn't good for us. Beans on toast if you have happy memories of childhood with this or chicken soup, or that well-known brand of tomato soup. 
as well as comfort food, mindful eating can be a way to use taste to relax. Taking a mindful approach to eating not only can help us lose weight if this is something we need to consider, it can also improve well-being. Sometimes we just want some peace and quiet to be able to drift away and relax. On our site, we have a three-minute relaxer video, which you can watch or listen to. Or watch and listen, whatever works for you. So settle into a place which you find comfortable. Make sure you're not operating machinery. This is time for you to relax and unwind. Be in the moment. If any thoughts pop into your head which cause you distress, imagine them being in a cloud and floating away. For the next few minutes, there is nothing for you to do but relax. We have a dream of a world where everyone has a positive state of well-being and cares about themselves, each other and the planet. I hope that you found at least one thing in this short webinar that will help you realise that actually you matter too and that your self-care is not self-indulgent. And to finish, I would just like to send three invitations which perhaps you may find of value and want to accept. The first one is making the decision. Does your well-being matter? might seem a strange question, but it's a place to start, because if the answer to that is yes, then the next question we have for ourselves is, so what am I doing to look after it? As already shared, if you want to look for other ideas for caring for your well-being, check out the QNIS website. Cope Scotland also have a variety of tools on their site, as do Capacitor. And the final thing I would suggest is make it matter to you. The list of things we have to do is long enough. Please don't make self-care another chore, another thing that has to be done. Make it something that you look forward to. As well as building in simple things like making sure you drink enough water. Taking a few moments every day to pause and be and not be doing. Having a break at lunchtime where you're not checking up in emails, text messages or paperwork. Even if it's only 15 minutes and it should be longer than 15 minutes. But even if it's only for 15 minutes, do nothing apart from have your lunch, laugh with colleagues, read a few pages of a book. Research has shown even six minutes a day reading can make a difference. Thanks for listening. Remember, you do matter. Take care.